Hi everybody, it's Laura. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I have another layout that I made using a My Creative Scrapbook Limited Edition kit. Today I am using the materials in the March kit, which included some beautiful papers and embellishments from the Simple Stories Simple Vintage Spring Garden Collection. I'm starting off with a piece of coral colored cardstock from my stash. I layered a piece of white cardstock that's a little bit smaller on top of that. And then the background paper that I'm going to use, that is from the kit. And I used some Distress Oxide in Abandoned Coral and I inked the edges of the paper that's in the background before I got started because some of the edges were white and I wanted them to all be coral colored. So now this piece of yellow paper, it's so pretty. This is going to be my background color. I have a photo of my daughter's bunny. This is Skitsy. And she was my daughter's rabbit. But then when my daughter went to college, of course, I took care of her. And we really bonded during that time. And she passed away a while ago. But I never knew how much I could love a bunny. So I was looking forward to doing this layout with this really cute picture of her. I'm inking the edges of all of these flowers that I'm going to use on the layout with some Distress Ink in Vintage Photo. These flowers were fussy cut from one of the pattern papers and I love when there are flowers that are on kind of a large scale to fussy cut out and I thought that I could make these into a big wreath going around my photo. And although most of these pieces here were fussy cut out from a piece of pattern paper, there are a couple of items that were from the ephemera pack. So I'm using my tried and true Creative Memories Circle Cutters. I've had this for so many years and I still use it regularly. I still bring it with me when I go on crops. And I'm using it to cut out a little ring so that I can put all of my flowers on top of the ring and that way I'll make sure that the wreath that I have is circular because I've tried to make wreaths in the past and they don't always turn out as circular as I would like, so I thought this would probably help me to use it as a guide. I plan on mounting my photo on this piece of pink pattern paper that I cut to size, and now I'm inking the edges. And then next, I attach that pink mat down to my photo. I'm trying to decide what to do with the wreath on the page. I was thinking I could put it in the center of the page, as I usually do. And then I was also thinking I could have it going slightly off of the left side of the yellow paper. I really wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do at this point. So I figured I would start by adding some of the flowers to the wreath. And then I could decide later on what I thought looked best. I think these flowers look really nice going around the circle. I'm trying to alternate them between the different colors. There are some pink flowers and there are some yellowish flowers. So I'm trying not to put all of the yellow flowers or all the pink flowers in one spot. And then as I was adding the flowers, I was thinking that it would look nice to have just a little tiny bit of the wreath going off the side of the page. Although I do love to make a wreath layout where you can see the whole wreath on the page, I thought I'd try something a little bit different. I'm happy with the arrangement of the flowers and I'm ready to start attaching them down to my ring. I am going to be popping some of them up on some foam for a little bit of dimension. So in general, I pop up every other flower. I don't want to pop up all the flowers. I don't want that much dimension, but I do like the idea of having that difference between the flowers that are attached straight down to the ring and others that are popped up a little bit. I just think it makes the layout look a little bit more interesting. The photo of our little skitsy is to the right of my mat. And I might have told this story before on my channel, so sorry if you're hearing this twice, but my daughter Danielle wanted to get a rabbit. Her friend had a number of bunnies and she wanted to bring one home. So when we went to her friend's house, there were rabbits everywhere. There were little babies, there were adult rabbits, there were quite a few of them. And I was a little concerned because it didn't seem like they were feeding the rabbits rabbit food. It seemed like they were just giving them a mixture of different things they had around the house. So I didn't know if it was going to be healthy. But she lived for quite a long time and she was just so sweet when you called her she would come running I used to take her out of her cage all the time I couldn't keep her out of her cage uh, indefinitely because she would chew on things but when I was home I would let her run around and she 
was just adorable. When you called her name, she would come running. She loved affection. She was just a real sweet bunny. And um, I still miss her. Every time I look at these pictures of her, I just think what an incredibly adorable bunny she was. And that's what scrapbooking is all about, right? To remember things like this in our lives that we look back on fondly. Or sometimes you can document things that are not the best memories, but you also want to remember them. And that's very authentic and cathartic. I tend to be the type that just scrapbooks the happy times. I guess I could expand what I scrapbook a little bit. Well, now I have my wreath completed and I cut off that extra piece that was going to go off the side of the page. And now I'm adding some adhesive to the back of my wreath and attaching it down to my background. And then I attach down my photo. I decided that instead of mounting it on the pink pattern paper, I was going to use the other side of that paper, which has a little bit of a check on it. And I think the reason that I did that was the coral paper going around the outside of the layout didn't exactly coordinate with that pink color. So I thought that it wouldn't be a good idea to have two solids that were similar, but not quite the same. I could have also used the coral paper that was in the background, but I decided to go with the small border of pattern paper. So I've added my title, which is Hello Lovely. And these are both from the kit. I also added those two little signs. One says grow and one says love. I tucked a few leaves into the wreath and then I started to think where I should put the butterflies on the layout. Of course, I have to have some butterflies on here. And then in the lower right hand corner earlier, I added a cute little chipboard bunny and I thought that it was perfect because it really does look a lot like our rabbit. The bunny on the chipboard piece is sitting inside of a teacup. And then I noticed there was another green teacup in the kit. So I decided that I was going to create a little cluster there. I also added a heart to that area just to kind of finish it off. I have now one large item, one medium sized item and a small sticker. And I think that that makes a nice cluster, especially a nice small one like this. So I attach the items in that little cluster down to the page. And then I switched out the heart. I had a pink heart and then I decided I was going to put a heart that has a bright cheery floral pattern in that spot. It kind of goes with the piece of chipboard. And then I moved the other heart up to the top of the layout. Now I'm going to attach down my title. I want to pop it up on some foam, so I am reinforcing it. I always do that. I just feel like when I add foam behind something, I want to make sure that it's nice and sturdy. Sometimes when I haven't reinforced elements like this and I've added foam behind them, they've bent over time and I don't want that to happen. So I use 120 pound cardstock. That's a nice thick weight and I think it is perfect for reinforcing anything on my scrapbooking layouts. I buy pieces of paper that are 12 inches by 18 inches. So I chop off six inches. So I'll have a 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. I use that for my mixed media. And then those leftover six by 12 inch pieces of 120 pound paper come in handy for things like this. And I go through a lot of these pieces of paper for things like matting my photos and reinforcing items on my layouts. So I like to keep these papers close by. As I had mentioned, I'm going to add some butterflies to the layout and I love adding some foam to the backs of their wings. So I'll add the foam just to the wings, but then put adhesive not only on the foam, but on the center of the butterfly and then press down on the center of the butterfly. So the middle of it sticks to the page, but the wings kind of pop up a little bit. It's just something that I really like to do to butterflies to give them some dimension. So now I'm going to attach down some other elements to the page. I attach down those little garden markers that say grow and love. However, I am going to move the marker that says love to the left hand side of the layout. I think that it will balance out the other marker if it's on the other side of the layout. And then I add some adhesive to the back of the word lovely. And I also am going to attach down the word hello. But first, I'm adding a little butterfly to the Y on Lovely, just so that there's some elements from the rest of the layout included with the title. I always like to do that so that the title seems like it's part of the page. Years ago, I used to just have a separate title, and I started realizing that if I bring some of the elements from the rest of the page to the title, it looks a little bit more like a cohesive page. 
Now I'm adding some photo corners to my photo, something that I love to do, and I do this on most of my layouts. I used my EK Success scalloped photo corner punch, and I punched out some photo corners from green paper, and then I inked the edges with the Distress ink. And then I also picked out some hearts. I wanted to add those all around the wreath. I thought that having some smaller elements mixed in with those larger flowers would add a little something to the layout. So I am adding those in a couple of different spots. I'm also going to ink some fussy cut bees. I thought that these bees would also be a nice addition. Again, they're nice and little and they are a different shape than the hearts. So I thought that these would go along really well with the other elements in the wreath. What I'm about to do happens to me often when I'm working on layouts that have wreaths. There was something about the area to the right-hand side of the photo that I just didn't like about the layout. So I decided that I was going to remove the title and a couple of the flowers that were in that area. I cut off some of the leaves because I was thinking it would be a little easier for me to attach down the flowers and then put the leaves exactly where I want them. And then I began rearranging those flowers and layering them a little bit differently. And I always mention on my videos how when you put foam behind something to pop it up, you can use some tape runner on the back of it, but you eventually have to glue that down to the page with some wet glue. But I don't do that initially because this is what happens to me. I will decide that I have to change something. I have to move something. And then if I have used wet glue to hold it down, I will still try to move it, but it can sometimes become a disaster. So that's why I wait until the entire layout is finished and I'm happy with everything. And then I will use wet glue to attach elements with foam on them down to the layout. And it's really important to do that because they do fall off after a kind of a short period of time if they're not reinforced with wet glue. But of course, that's just my crazy way of thinking. If you are happy with your layout and you feel confident to glue things down right away, that's absolutely fine. I'm not saying not to do that. That's just my process and I share it with you in case you happen to feel the same way that I do. And now I'm moving those little garden markers. It seems like I move the word love to the left-hand side of the photo and then I put the word grow at the top of the wreath. And then I had one more little chipboard heart left over that I hadn't used. So I decided to find a place for that on the layout. And you could see that those little tiny hearts keep moving around the page and I'm not done arranging them just yet. I wanted to add some branches to the layout. I use these little branches on so many of my layouts, especially when there are lots of florals. I always mention how I think that it's nice to work something white back in with a layout that has a lot of colors on it. I also, as I was mentioning before, like to have some items that are a little bulkier or a little larger in scale, and then some that are a little smaller. And I feel like floral arrangements are the same way. There are some larger flowers and there are some medium flowers and there are usually some very small flowers like baby's breath. So I think that these little branches kind of serve as the baby's breath to my layouts. I think they add that nice little finishing detail. And I found that I used my scissors quite a bit to help me position those little branches. It was helpful for tucking them underneath some of the elements that I have in that wreath. And then once I had all of my branches placed where I wanted them, I went back in with some gel glue and added just a little bit to each of the branches. So far, I only have paper and chipboard on the layout, and I always like to add elements made of different materials. So here I'm adding one of my very favorite embellishments, which is self-adhesive pearls. I picked a pink that I thought looked kind of nice with some of the pinks that are on the layout, and I added them to the four photo corners. And then I use the same color pearl and I added smaller ones to those little hearts that I have going around the wreath. To the centers of the butterflies, I added some very tiny black jewels. And I'm not sure where I got those pearls, but I do know that the little black jewels are from a company called Want to Scrap. I love buying their jewels because they have some really teeny tiny ones. And then I decided that I would add some white splatters. So I covered up my photo and I'm adding some watered down white acrylic paint splatters. And I'm adding them mainly all around the wreath, 
But of course, you know, splatters have a mind of their own. They go wherever they want to. And I found that there were a couple of spots where I wanted to add splatters and I wasn't successful in splattering them there. So I just used the straw inside of the container that holds the paint and I dotted those where I wanted them on the layout. Then I trimmed a few embellishments that were hanging over the left side of the layout. And that is the last touch. This layout is complete. And here are a few close-ups. Thank you so, so much for watching this video and watching it all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. And I really hope that you enjoyed watching. I always leave the link to the My Creative Scrapbook website in the description box so you can check out all of the beautiful kits they have and order a subscription if you're interested. I hope you have a fantastic day and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <music>